none of us know how much time we have. We've got to make it count. There's a lot to do. And there are a lot of things that we can do to help each other. We can't waste our time with being petty and trivial. Hello and welcome to the video. I hope you are um, rested. Is that a good way to say it? Yeah. The pre-show taping will never air because yeah. <laughs> we won't be able to deny what was said. <laughs> Things were said. We did a lot of processing mm -hmm. and therapy. Yeah. Yeah. Talking. And laughed and cried and maybe cussed a little. I'm just saying, maybe. Anything can happen. Yes. My dear friend Lisa is here. And I'm so <laughs> glad finally. I feel like I've waited a long time to ask you to come on. Not because I didn't Aww. want you. From day one, you were on my top <laughs> list of guests. But you're a very busy woman. Well, you know. You I are. Know. I don't know about that. Do you want to introduce yourself <laughs> to the people? So what do I say? Whatever you want to say in your bio, you can say anything in your bio. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm Lisa Valentine Clark. I am the mother of five and host of The Lisa Show on BYU Radio, Which? where I talk <laughs> <laughs> every morning and bring people, I hope, a little information, entertainment, and inspiration. And it's a fun show, two hours of, of new content, Monday through Friday, and and randomly, once a month, someone calls in. Yeah, it's fun. Me. I know. And we get to talk and yeah. chat and the last have a good times, time. I think you've been on vacation. That doesn't sound like me. <laughs> I've probably just been out. <laughs> it is I a, need a vacation. It is a great show. But people Thanks. may also know you from behind the radio on the screen. Oh, yes. As an actor and producer on Once I Was a Beehive and uh, Once I Was Engaged, so which you great. can stream now, which I hope you everyone can. will. You can stream now? Mm -hmm. Just go to Once I Was Engaged um, on Instagram, and uh, you can. There's all the instructions to do that, and so I've loved that. And on BYU TV's show offs as well, yeah. where we do improv, which is the dream. It is the dream. And are we going to be able to for the old schoolers buy DVDs of Once I Was Engaged? Um, I know that they have had them. Typically, I think most people just stream it. Okay, but I, what, when? But the, yeah, you can do it. You get that when the zombie book, I think. when the I, zombie apocalypse hits, I want to still be able to watch my I Lisa know. Valentine Clark movie. We're gonna have so many bigger things to worry okay, about. Okay, okay, fine. With the zombies, okay, but okay. We digress. Um, one other thing in your bio besides being an amazing actress and mom is that you recently gave one of, I think, hands down, one of the best BYU devotionals oh, ever. Thank you. That's and so kind I of you to say. And I probably have talked about it on every interview I've given. I'm like, multiple. Oh, People keep inviting me you. on to talk That's about so nice. my stuff. And I'm like, well, listen, oh. what I really want to talk about is my friend Lisa. She just did this really great devotional. I didn't pay her to say that. <laughs> I, I feel like I should know. <laughs> no, it's so <laughs> it put you. into words. And I was so, I think I told you this privately, that... I was really worried. I wanted the Lisa part of Lisa to still show up within that forum, mm -hmm. which is hard because it's there's... It's hard to, yeah. to make that choice. Right, right. And also it has to go through some correlating and mm -hmm. and it has a form already developed because of tradition, right? Mm -hmm. But I loved it. It was such this beautiful, like, Lisa-ness <laughs> and faith <laughs> and, and really some practical ways of which framing hard things. And that's kind of what I want to jump into. Sure is that you have recently gone through the most horrific experience. Yeah, and I would say. Yeah. <laughs> to me. Yeah, the most horrific. And so as beautiful as you are on the outside and as funny and talented as you are, it's true. It's true. People say, is she really like that? She really is like that. You have gone through the last few years some of the toughest times mm -hmm. that I think um, – you can read about it and you can see it yeah. in a movie, but when you're living it, do you want to share different. with the middle audience what middle you just experienced? Well, so for those who aren't familiar, my um, husband was diagnosed with ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease about, oh, now it's been like five and a half years. Does that feel weird? Yeah, it really feels weird to say that. And so at the time, our kids were ages eight to 18, so a lot has happened, and I don't even know how to really fully express that now um, and the hard changed right the hard of accepting a terminal diagnosis no treatment no cure the hard of telling your family and your friends and then being in the middle of dealing with the actual 
ramifications of the disease. The reality. And the reality, which for those who aren't familiar with ALS, it's the worst of diseases. We, I just called it the worst. Um, and you just, because of the miscommunication, the misfiring of the, of the neurons, your brain doesn't properly like communicate to your muscles, so they just atrophy. And um, so he slowly lost the use of all of his muscles and to the point where really for the last year um, and a half, almost two years, he couldn't really move or talk. Um, and so dealing with that, adjusting that while you're raising kids, while you're starting a new career during a global pandemic. <laughs> it was a little ridiculous. You had some time on your hands. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Right? So so when we talk about like being in the middle of something hard, it's like, well, which one? You know, yeah. I mean, raising Kids. teenagers is hard. Adult Watching children. them launch out into the world is hard. Dealing, um, helping your husband die with dignity um, and love in the best way possible and not suffer is hard. Um, dealing with the realities of caring full time for a handicapped um, person who you love and want to get the best care is hard. Trying to learn how to juggle working and being a mom and being a full-time caregiver is hard. There's just a lot of difficult things during an intense period of time. And what's interesting is uh, that I've learned, which was a nice surprise, is that there are different kinds of hard that people don't see. Um, so losing Christopher and not having him even having him and needing to take care of his every need from scratching his nose, you know what I mean? And to helping him with communicate the bathroom, yeah. with the, you know, Stephen Hawking kind of like screen and stuff like that. All of that hardness um, wasn't as hard as learning to live without him. For sure. I think about you a lot at night and I don't always text you, <laughs> but for some reason, it's going to make me emotional at night. I think of you okay. and I think of my friend, Jenny Taylor, who lost yeah. major Brent Taylor, who's been on the middle and I always say extra prayers for both of you at night. Oh, that's so nice. Because Thank you. it's at night when <laughs> no. your mind goes in the weird places yeah. and you're used to having a partner that you could mm. just say, by the way, the craziest thing on the news today. By the way, the craziest thing There's in the neighborhood. There's just so much. When right. you lose a partner like yes. that. Yes. Who's your best friend and the father of your children. The and grounding. the love yes. that you have. and I mean, so many different things you don't even anticipate. Yeah. And, and, you know, in my sort of grief groups that, you know, when we communicate it, we all sort of agree that it just changes every aspect of your life. How you go grocery shopping, how you have dinner, your routine of going to bed. Change. I mean, like the things that you don't think about, you think about the major things of like when there are big events like that happen oh, in your kids' days. lives yeah. or the first anniversaries or things like that of of a pain or celebration and 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 realizing oh yeah they're not there i mean that's one thing right but all the little things that you don't it's been surprising and i think a lot of people can relate to this right the things that bring up your grief that you were like oh i didn't see that coming you know where like i was expecting for example christmas day to be really hard and christmas eve was actually the hard time but christmas day i was like oh this is actually okay yeah. i feel at peace and do but then new year's eve and new year's day came out of nowhere, knocked me off. I had, it was bad. And I, I didn't see it coming at all. Things like that that you can't really like plan for and people expect certain days to, or certain things to trigger you and they don't. Um, and I, again, I think a lot of people can relate to that of where you're like, why am I sad? Why am I suddenly, where is this coming from? And trying to make sense of that and build a new life and raise kids. And it's a lot. It's just, and it's on, never one thing. And then on top of that, there's a pandemic. So the funeral was during that time, which changed the whole process yeah. of what that looked like. Yeah, we didn't really get to have the mm. kind of, I don't want to say celebration, but the kind of, it. nothing was normal. Normal. Nothing was as I expected it to be. Mm -hmm. Everything felt off. But the truth is, is that even if everything was typical, I, I may still feel that way. So I've, you sort of have to like kind of let that go, I, I think. I think that's such an important thing for those that are in the middle of grief. I've had the same thing with Meg where all of a sudden I'm like, no, this is not grief today. This cannot be why I'm crying in the shower. Yeah. And then others will be like, yeah, this is exactly what this is. Or for me, it was bra shopping. Sorry. I was like, I want to just call my, I remember sitting oh, down in Coles, yeah. just crying, ugly cry. And she'd been gone for four years. Yeah. I was like, I've already processed. What am I yeah. doing? Why and it I? was just like, oh, I hate doing this. And I want to call my sister. Yeah. So I love you 
framing grief in a little more expansive way? Well, I think that when we have an idea of what grief should and shouldn't be, yes. it's like our subconscious trying to control it, which yes. anyone who's dealt with overwhelming grief, and, and to be honest, I have, have gr grieved for a lot of things over my life, but nothing so big like this. Um, and once you sort of accept that you're not in control with it, that you will always have it, that you're not... You know, I was like, where do I put this? Like, mm -hmm. I got to put this down. But you just learn how to carry it a little, just a little bit better so that it's not always just in your face. I think that has been helpful as well as you just feel your feelings and know that you're not always going to feel like that forever and just sort of let it pass. Um, but it's hard. And I think I you and I were working together during the last few years. And I think you're grieving like, I think people yeah, think sure. grief is just when there's a, a death. No, no, I, no we were, were grieving, grieving for the life that, that we wanted, for the, dreams, the that... dreams that you didn't even know you had, that you do, you have to go, oh, I wanted this really wonderful, good thing, and there is no way I'm going to get it. Mm -hmm. And I have to take that and put it somewhere and do something with it. Um, and I thought I was so, like, easygoing and whatever, but no one is. I mean, we all have these ideas of of how we feel like our lives are supposed to be. Um, and it's a real mind game to sort of stay present to that. And some days are better than others, yeah. right? Like, And I I have really, to reference your BYU devotional, I thought you did such a great job of interfacing where your faith has met all of those vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. And I have repeated you to oh. other people. <laughs> and I keep saying, please don't. Just go watch her say it because oh, she said it way, way so better. Nice. But you do improv yeah. on show-offs. Mm -hmm. And you really framed that whole devotional around life is this great, beautiful improv scene where mm -hmm. at any point we can either say yes to what is happening on stage mm -hmm. or we can throw it. This is my words. You didn't say this. Okay. Throw a tantrum and scream and yell like, no, no, no. And you gave, yeah. gave this great analogy of how like improv only works when another actor enters mm -hmm. the scene and says yes to it mm -hmm. versus them like, why are you having a little fit over there? I don't even know what you're doing. Yeah. They add to it. Do you want to talk about your faith a little bit on how you have practically added a yes to what the scenes have looked like instead of we talk about the what, but we don't always talk about the how in the yeah. gospel? Yeah, Like sure. how have you said yes to these uncomfortable heartbreaking scenes that showed up on the stage. Well, I feel like a lot of the gospel and maybe most of it is internal, right? Like in our hearts and and all over the scriptures and how Christ interacts with other people, it all has to do with our heart. And so certainly the idea of have coming to the table, uh, you know, the gospel table to Christ, however you sort of frame it in your mind, you know, the idea of coming with a broken heart and a contrite spirit certainly means something different to me now. And and I do feel that um, having sort of a gospel maturity of examining what the scriptures really say and what Christ has promised and what he hasn't promised and coming to face to face with that. Um, has helped me understand a deeper, or have a deeper, I think, appreciation for simple gospel principles or what I viewed as simple, like what grace means mm -hmm. and what strength in and the power of covenants mean. You know, sometimes we just gloss over that. and It's a theory. And we say, and so grace and the atonement and the power of covenants and the new and everlasting covenant means something different to me now. And and so, um, because when you're desperate for <laughs> help, strength, purpose, meaning, anything, you you do you rewind, you know, what 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 it is you believe, you examine it and look it out, you pick it apart, you sort of lay it out and say, Okay, now what? Mm -hmm. And so as I've, you know, picked some stuff off, because I just feel like, you know, my life and how I thought I was doing with my righteous desires and my understanding of the gospel and life and the, its purpose, you know, is like a bunch of objects on a table. And then I just feel like grief just knocks them all off and yeah. knocks the table yeah. over and goes, yeah, I don't care. Yeah. And then you can either sit on the floor and go, yeah, there, nothing's real and everything's horrible and I'm going to stay down here forever. And we all have those moments. Mm -hmm. Let's be 
honest. That's the reality like, of faith. Well, there we go. It's yeah. like a, I was always telling my friends, it's just like a bit two by four to the face, and I feel like I'm getting up, and then there's another one, yeah. and another, and it's just like, what's the point? But at some point, yeah, you know, uh, and people describe grief in different ways, like you know, waves. The waves come crashing less and less often, or the ball that's bouncing in the box. That your life experience gets bigger. So even though grief is still as big, it doesn't hit you or you know as much. For me, it's picking up those items that had, you know, of all the things that I knew or thought I knew about life and faith. and and faith and um, covenant keeping and things like that are on the floor. And then I get to decide what I pick up and what is on there. And so now there are a few just very treasured, hard-won truths absolutes. and absolutes that are eternal, that were true before this life or true during this life and will be true eternally that I picked up and, and they were hard-won and... Um, and I value them, and, I, and I'm so grateful to my Savior, who just was always just offering them always at, at no matter, you know, what length on that path that I was at. Do you feel like it's cliche, and I don't want to be offensive by saying this, that, you know, I was just reading in the Book of Mormon where there's a moment where some of the hearts got hardened from the same wars and trauma sure. and some of them got softer. Yeah. I've I feel like I've had at least a fourth row of you <laughs> <laughs> of your last few years uh, and I've watched your capacity increase and I've well, watched this expansion of a heart that could have gotten hardened and and we all want to do that when it's hurting, right? We're like, listen, if I just wall off and I get really angry Yeah, like or, I mean sometimes it's just yeah, too much, right? That somehow that protects mm -hmm. this pain. Do you, do you see that in yourself? Do you see that your faith has actually, you've picked up the things and put back on the table the absolutes. Yeah. And through this process of heartbreak and loss that you've become more? I don't know if it's, if I'm that self-aware. <laughs> I okay. hope I am, but I do feel. As her token PR rep. <laughs> <laughs> you have, but Okay. <laughs> But I do feel for sure that going through this experience, I looked around and I thought, and Christopher actually said this to me in his final, you know, months. Oh, now I get it because I've seen people love us and serve us. Now I understand how I was supposed to love and serve other people. And that's how I feel, like the way that my family and my close friends have saved me and my kids and served me and served Chris in such intimate ways. It's like I, you look around or now I do and I go, oh, other people have gone through this. You know, I'm not the only one. Like, and people have gone through worse than me. And so now I just sort of look around at the world, I think a, a little differently. How could I look at it the same? Yeah. Where, like, I remember there were days where, you know, you, you still have to go to the grocery store. You still have to go to the dentist. And you're like, doesn't anybody know that, like, the most important person on the whole earth is, like, suffering right now? Like, I remember having that conversation Don't, like, I'd just be you. driving in the car and just, like, crying. and like, don't you guys know Chris Clark is having the a most hard important, time? Yeah. You know, and, and, and they don't know. Because they're and, acting like everything's normal. Well, because it is. You know, I remember feeling the same way when I would bring home a new baby. Yeah. And I'd be like, what are you guys going to the bank for? I just had a baby. Like, this is a big deal. A new life is in the world. And you guys right. are just, like, going to the or bank. Or you watch and... the news and you're like, the world's just going forward. Yeah. Why is the world going and, forward? And, and you feel that. But I, So I do, to answer your question in a very long, No, no, no. I way, love long answers. I do look at people and I think, I have no idea how their heart has been broken. You know, everybody deserves a little bit of a break. And, and I try really hard to be a little bit more kind and generous and give people the benefit of the doubt. And it is easier for me to do that now than it was, I think, before when, uh, you know, maybe I was, you know, a Your worry more... list was yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. When it was different and I, you know, I've been knocked down a lot of times. And so I kind of look around like, oh, I bet you have to. And you have, you know, there's just the assumption now. The fragility of life, I think, the gift of grief, right, is that you can't see the world the same. And you, no, see, no you see layers. I see layers in you. And I think your capacity to love has increased. And I think that's really interesting that 
I don't know how we build Zion. If we well, don't I'll go tell you some stuff. I think that the way that we build it is like the example that Christopher had, where he was like, "Oh, now I'm now the clock is ticking, right?" And so every time I see somebody, I'm going to tell them that I love them because I don't want them to like assume that I don't or worry or wonder about it. And his ability to reach out and think, "Who can I help today?" When he you can't move or speak, and you're just like in this, and he would text people funny things and like. <laughs> You know, the like best. do, and, and and because he wanted to bring people joy and make connections, and that's what he did, like full time. And he was this awesome husband and awesome father, while he is literally wasting away and dying. Which you know, I think about it now, and I'm like, like it speaks so highly of him, but it also speaks to us. I remember I felt this way immediately after his death, um, and I've always wanted to sort of keep it. And of course, it waxes and wanes, but like this, it, this. This spirit of none of us know how much time we have. We've got to make it count. There's a lot to do. And there are a lot of things that we can do to help each other. We can't waste our time with being petty and trivial. And I just, I really felt that. Yeah. Because he was able to accomplish so much in his life. So, you know. It was the 10,000 foot view of yeah, reality versus yeah. in the weeds. When you're in it and you're like, mm, we're in the weeds going, and we're like, this the is the thing. big thing. Yeah. yeah. I will say, though, it says a lot about your partnership, too, that he was able to show up in that space. I know you give him a ton of credit that he sat there. And one of the things that you've shared that has changed me is instead of waking up every day thinking, this is what I can't do, he woke mm -hmm. up every day thinking, well, what can I still do? Yeah. But that says a lot about your partnership. And it says a lot about who you are and your contribution and and mm -hmm. the life that you built together I love, um, I, I love you and uh, I, I, love you. <laughs> I, and I love, I love that just recently, I think I Marco'd you snot cries because I went to the temple and I had the long list of all the things and I was like, Hey God, cause of the pandemic, I haven't been here a lot. So you're going to show up, right? The angels are coming today. Answers are coming. Yeah. Silence. Yeah. And I almost could hear him like, okay, go home now. And I was like, wait, I showed up in your temple. I like, I could, you know what it took to make the appointment and get here. And I came home feeling discouraged. And the spirit was mm. like, remember that devotional yesterday you haven't listened to yet? <laughs> and I snot cried through the whole thing. Aww. Because I just felt like the spirit was answering those questions through your words and through your experience. And so I know, I know Chris... I know you want to share with him the good days too, and he's not there to talk through some of that, but he's been there. And and I felt him just cheering you on like, there's my girl. Look at her on the stage. I'm serious. <laughs> You're so nice. I'm serious. No, and I just feel embarrassed. But No, um, that's why I'm saying it, because you won't say it. But I do I feel, feel like so grateful for you sharing thank you, a, and a thanks window for saying into that. this very private part of your life that you're like, <laughs> anybody else want to come make a comment oh. about my business? No, I mean here's the thing, like you can choose, right? Like I'm I'm a grown up and I can choose what I share. And certainly there are other private moments yeah. that are very meaningful to me that that I haven't, um, but the message the the message of the gospel is the good news, you know. And I think that the evidence of a life well lived is something that I saw in, in a dramatic way. You know, when you see somebody complete their earthly mission, done, you did it, graduate, way to go. Um, it's really inspiring, and it's really, I mean, heartbreaking, obviously, but. Um, but it, 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 it does put things into focus of, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. You know, what are we all doing here? You Why know? are we destroying Why each other? Why are we, well, you know, and, and what's our purpose? Mm -hmm. And losing that focus. And he had such a focus because he was running out of time quick. Like, hurry. Mm -hmm. Like, let's wrap it up. And, I mean, we could all use a little bit more of that of, what's your purpose? What are you doing? Why are we here? Like, what are you focusing on? Yeah, we got to pay the bills and, and uh, you know, watch some Netflix and have a little downtime. Of course. Right. But, like... But what's it, what's it all about? And, and, and it's good for all of us just to be able to, I think, look to people that we admire or who actually did a good job of it despite um, difficulties or with difficulties. And that, that shows us, yeah, it's possible, you know, but it's not going to be like angels coming down every day and every day, you know, it's mostly a mundane, you know, habitual thing that you have to like suck it up and do. If you want to, and and I and I do feel like 
I didn't feel particularly called to help Christopher die in a in a beautiful way. I felt completely overwhelmed. Um, and that's where grace comes in. And that's where coming and just saying, well, I'll do it. Like, I'll do it. And just having, making that commitment or making that choice and then relying. That's, that's where my faith was really strengthened of like, you've asked me to do this impossible thing and, 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 and I know I need to do it. I don't know how to do it. I don't have, this is not a brother of Jared moment where I'm like, no, I know what you do. Just do this. This is a, I see no possible solution to this. I don't know what to do, but I'll do whatever it takes. And then watching the evidence of that, of the evidence of of just being willing to to want to do something good, but that's very very hard and humbling, um, is just a life changing experience. And you took the rocks and said, "I got rocks." No, I said, "I don't even know what this." No, is. no, no, you I do. Know. You no, did. I didn't even know what it was. You were like, Here's "I'm trying to rocks. tell you how ignorant." I'm like, "I don't know what it was." But I, do. I watched it anyway. from a very little perspective of it. I mean, I, I, I know I'm not maybe a first tier person, but just. And what you've shared publicly, I'm grateful that your middle isn't over because... It's hard to be in the middle. I know it is. We want the end. Yeah. But... That's the whole reason for the show. One thing that I have... Is like... Have learned though is sometimes not knowing the end is a a mercy. Mm -hmm. It's a gift. Mm -hmm. And And I thought that for a long time because I'm like, just tell me so that I can pace myself because I need to know how to pace myself. Tell me how it ends and when and how and if... and let me think if we know. Let me give... Give me all the information and then I can make a better informed decision. And had I known the end... It would have off balanced everything. It was that was a hard lesson to learn. But there is some beauty in the middle, although it's super frustrating. And that's literally what I. But so's life. What I wanted you to <laughs> share is that that magic of that pivoting and that improv is really where all the magic happens, right? It's not the knowing. It's not having all the pieces in the pattern, even though I want to follow the list. And sometimes it's a gift. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we get to choose how we frame it, you know. I, I, well, you know, I know that a lot of people and critics of faith will say, "Well, you're just seeing what you want to see," and I think, yeah, right? we all are. Yeah, absolutely, a hundred percent. Yeah, and so we do see what we want to see, and when you do look for God's hand in your life, you'll see it more. When if you're looking for gratitude, you'll see it more. If you're looking for a reason um, to be able to go to bed at the end of the day, just like with peace, you'll find it. Like, you know, and, and, and that mental focus is more a part of the gospel than I had previously realized. Einstein said it, right? You can either live your life as if everything's a miracle or nothing is. And he was a great scientist. So there you go. I don't know why that helps me, but for some reason. (laughs) Probably because we're both pro-science because we're like really smart. (laughs) Really smart. And you could like discredit faith. Thank you for showing what faith looks like and talking about how you just are choosing to put the things back on on the table that are your absolutes. And thanks for for living your life openly so we can get a glimpse of the middles. I'll go back in my cave now. (laughs) Well, I'll be quiet for a few days. Uh, No, no, no. I'm grateful. No, I won't. I'm so grateful. (laughs) I'm so grateful for you. And I'm grateful that God let us be on the planet at the same time. What if I I had been born in 1820? And I I wouldn't even, I'd have been watching you from the other side. Like, she's so funny. I want to know her. (laughs) true i love you thank you uh please share this especially if you're a caregiver right if you're going through grief if you're going through a faith crisis for real right yes the middles are messy out there or parenting adult children we'll have you back (laughs) whatever we didn't even go there (laughs) i love my children so much this is a message to them they won't watch (laughs) anything with my their mom they're like "Mm, we know what she's gonna say my My kids are always like hey where you want i'm like i told you why are you (laughs) surprised (laughs) We yeah, love she loves you. I love you. Everybody loves you. Can you make choices that we agree with? No? It's okay. We're going to love you no matter what. That's it's how much true. we love. That's true. You can never stop us. So true. <laughs> Thank you again for joining us here on The Middle, and we'll see you again next week.